coffee time. <laughs> All right, well, good morning, everybody. And I realize some of you are tuning in from other countries, so it's, it's probably not morning there. So, uh, but I am in Tampa, Florida in the United States. So it is uh, approximately 10 a.m. my time. So it's still, it's all, it's got an a.m. in front of it. I feel like it's, it's, it's coffee time. It's still, it's still, still possible for coffee. So, um, <laughs> somebody just wrote my favorite food. So yes, yeah, uh, and if you're joining from the West coast of the U.S., then it's still definitely coffee time. Um, this week's coffee time is brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> it's not brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. It's not sponsored. So, so story about coffee this morning is, uh, my wife, my wife got up a little bit before I did and she made a pot of coffee and I went in and poured it and I realized we had no cream. Now for some of you, that doesn't matter. For me, you should understand that cream is an essential part of my coffee. Okay. I won't drink coffee without cream. You can make fun of me. I don't care. I like Dunkin' Donuts. People think it's swill. I love it. I won't go to Starbucks. I go to Dunkin' Donuts. It's the only place I'll go to get coffee. So, uh, cream is such an essential part of coffee for me. And we didn't have any this morning. So I took a trip over to Dunkin' Donuts. Other things this morning is brought to you by this morning is brought to you by the Super Bowl champion Buccaneers. Again, it is not really brought to you by the Super Bowl champions, but I live in Tampa, Florida. I had to pull out the Buck shirt. I forgot to put it on, but go Bucks! We're uh, we're extremely happy here in Tampa um, about our team. So uh, so um, some fun stuff there. All right, uh, if you got some some areas you want Photoshop tips on, get them ready. Post them in the comments area. I'll try to accommodate. I've got a couple for you, and then we'll see. Uh, the whole purpose of this is we'll see what you guys come up with um, afterwards. But uh, let's see here. Somebody wrote "Go Bucks." I'm with you. Go Bucks. Um, Super Bowl was interesting. I was talking to my my wife about it, and it's like it, if you were a Chiefs fan, I think it was interesting up until a halftime. If you were a Bucks fan. It was interesting for the whole game because you wanted to see the trophy and everything at the end of it. If you were everybody else that watched the Super Bowl, it was probably the most boring thing in the world. To me, all the pre-game stuff was just stop trying to make me cry. Like it was just incredibly boring. The game was kind of boring. The halftime show was just kind of dumb. And the commercials aren't even fun anymore. It's like they don't even try to make them commercials anymore. I don't know what it's like. It's not even funny. So, but if you again, being a Bucks fan, we watched the whole game, but then I started to realize for everybody else, they probably tuned out in the first or second quarter. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop for some tips. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a content aware tip here. So this is inside of Photoshop and what we, what we have, you can see this uh, telephone wire, electrical wire, whatever it is coming across here. So we have a couple of ways we could do content aware stuff in Photoshop, but a couple of ways to remove distractions. And, um, I would think, I personally think that there's no better tool out there for removing distractions than Photoshop. Nothing, nothing even comes close. So one of the ways that we, oh, we got, we got, uh, we got somebody here. Oh, I, I know. So we got somebody from Norway. Hello. Um, so I'm going to go over to the spot healing brush. Okay. You can press the letter J, get you over here to the toolbox over into that spot healing brush. And a lot of people don't know, but the, the spot healing brush actually has a content aware option up there at the top. So with the spot healing brush, it's, it's kind of nice because we don't even have to sample. We can just go in here and we can just paint. And you can see it even brought in a little tree down there thinking that maybe that's what I wanted to do. So we can go in there and paint and we can remove things with content aware. Um, if I zoom into the photo and I wanted to remove that little thing above the doorway, I could, but you don't have to sample. You don't have to do anything. It's nice, quick for small, easy places. All right. So that's version number one. Version number two is you could take something like your lasso tool and you can lasso around an area and you can go to edit content aware or edit fill. Okay. And then you can choose as contents, you can choose content aware and Photoshop will go through and it'll get rid of that and actually thinks we want to extend it. So it's not necessarily doing a good job in this case, but a lot of times it does, but that actually dovetails perfectly into the third 
reason to their third place to get to content aware, which is to do the same thing I did. Go ahead and lasso something, okay? And then you're gonna come up and go to edit and go down here to content aware fill. All right, so that's different than just going to fill. Before we, we did edit fill, remember? This is going down to edit content aware fill, which opens up a dedicated workspace for all things content aware. All right, so from here, what you're gonna see is a little green area. Photoshop has gone in and it has automatically selected an area it thinks that I want to pull from. And that, was, that would be different from what we just saw in that last example, right? Because in the last example, I didn't get to choose a source. So Photoshop thought that I wanted to continue the telephone wire, the electrical wire, whatever it was, it thought I wanted to continue it because I couldn't tell it what to do. In this case, you can tell it what to do with this green area. You've got a little brush up here, plus and minus. You can figure out what they do, plus adds to the green area, minus subtracts from the green area. So I can say, no, don't include these trees. Uh, don't include any of these trees. But Photoshop does a pretty good job of selecting what it thinks you want to include. You've got lots of options over here where you can change it if it's not working well. Honestly, I could explain them all to you guys. Um, I have to tell you, I, I really, I actually don't know what they do other than I click and I try different versions. If I don't like the way it looks, I come over here to color adaptation. If I don't like the way it looks and it's got anything to do with color, if I see the coloring is off of what it fixed, I try color adaptation. If I don't think it actually matches the perspective of what I'm fixing, I try rotation adaptation. I, I wish I could give you a more technical answer than that, but there are literally only a few options in there. It's not worth even taking the time to explain them because you can just click through and see what looks better, which is what I would do anyway. Okay, so we can add subtract. You could see that it goes in there and it fixes it. And then here's, here's one last tip on content aware for you. And that is if I wanna do more, and I usually try to do my content aware things in pieces. You can see I, I, repaired, I repaired most of, hold on, there we go. I repaired the sky and then I would try to do the trees later. I find it works better when you do it in sections. You don't even have to leave this window. All you have to do is click apply. Photoshop will fix it. And then you go and take this lasso tool over here and then you can go and you can lasso, sorry, go over here. <laughs> you go over here and you can lasso a whole nother area to fix. All right now Photoshop's gonna adapt to try to fix that. And then again, you can go back to your brush and you can add and subtract from areas. So I'm gonna subtract from the sky and all this area because we don't really have much of that that we want it to fix with. We really want it to pull from the trees. So I just subtract the green. Remember the green is what it's considering to fix it with. And I should get a better result over here. Okay, and then I can go and I can add areas if I want to. And then again, I can click apply and I can do it into another part of the photo. So you don't even have to leave this window. Um, you can work on the entire photo alone inside of this, uh, this window here without ever leaving it. So um, let's see here, so. So as far as content aware tips go, there's quite a few of them, okay? From, from easy to a little bit more complex. There's a lot of ways to do that stuff. Um, I can't tell you one is gonna be the one to use all the time. I can say I use the easy way when it's just a tiny little dot or something like that I wanna get rid of. When it's something bigger, I usually start to build there and use that big window that we, uh, that we saw. All right, so let's see, uh, let's go check out our comments. Lots of people saying hello. Hello, 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 hello. Lots of people saying, okay. Well, lots of people saying hello, talking about coffee. If you missed, let's see how many. Oh yeah, we got probably double the amount of people. This is morning coffee and Photoshop tips brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. Not really by Dunkin' Donuts, but my cup of Dunkin' Donuts here because I, I explained earlier, we're out of cream. It's a whole thing. Anyway, um, 
Anyway, uh, let's see here. So let's go get into another tip here. I got another cool one for you. Um, also, if you guys would do me a gigantic favor, um, especially so so this is on YouTube and this is, you know, I love doing these tips, happy to do them for you. Um, we have close to 100 people watching here. Obviously, there are many, many more people on YouTube. So help me. Help me get out to those people if you like these tips. I, I, I think I, I think I do a, a good amount of them. So help me get out there. I, I have a very interesting stat to share with you because YouTube has all kinds of statistics that we can go in and, and we can look at. So 75% of the people that watch my videos on YouTube aren't subscribed to my channel. To only 25% that actually watch the videos are subscribed to my channel. So if you could help me with that, you'll probably subscribe. But if you could share this with, with a group, throw it on your Facebook page and share, you know, grab the share link off of YouTube, um, I, would, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it just to help get the word out there and, uh, and help out there. Okay? All right. Let's see here. Uh, oh, got a good question here. So we got one from uh, Plex. Plez X29, how do you initially edit your raw files? Uh, I initially edit those files inside of, uh, inside of Lightroom, which is the same exact thing as Adobe Camera Raw, okay? They're, they're both exactly the same. So I would start inside of Lightroom and basically I'm gonna do my technical edits. I'm gonna do shadows, highlights, overall exposure, white balance, lens corrections, any little, oh, I'm not, I'm not even sharing my screen. You can't even see what I'm doing. Let's change that. There we go. So <laughs> let me reset it. So uh, I would do shadows, highlights, exposure, all of those settings, any tone settings, um, any lens corrections, any sharpening, um, just overall color changes, color exposure, anything like that. That's what I'm gonna do inside of Lightroom. If you're not using Lightroom and you open up a raw photo, uh, that raw photo here, I can see if let's pop this into Photoshop. When you're, if you open up a raw photo, it opens up into Adobe Camera Raw, which is the same exact thing as Lightroom, all right? The settings are exactly the same. Lightroom, of course, offers more features in different ways in different areas. It's, it's really our organizational tool. Um, it's a little bit easier for photographers to work in rather than opening one photo at a time. But whatever your workflow is, you have access to the same tools. Whether you wanna use Lightroom or not, you still have Adobe's raw editing technology, which I really, I, I, I put in the top two out there. Um, the only other thing that comes close is Capture One, but to me, Capture One's very expensive and, and doesn't include Photoshop and all the other things that, that I want. But top two raw editors out there and you, you have it in Adobe, so you can use it on any photo. All right, so that's how I start my raw editing. And then I would go into Photoshop if I need something else. So whatever that something else is, removing distractions, replacing something in the photo, making a perfect selection of something. Those are types of things we would go into Photoshop for. All right, uh, let's see here. So let's, we did a little bit of content aware, fun stuff. Um, here's a, another fun one for you. I actually did in a YouTube video a while back, but uh, I, I'll assume many of you haven't seen it. Um, let's see here. So, so if you ever take something with a wide angle lens, um, What's gonna happen is the, the wide angle lens is gonna make things that are close to you big. And it's gonna make things that are away from you smaller. Okay, that's the way a wide angle lens works. So when you take a picture and you know, uh, this picture here, when this person pointed this lens down, down at the road, it makes the road look gigantic. And these mountains off in the distance, while they look big, I'm sure they were much bigger in person. So a wide angle lens is actually changing reality. We're not gonna use Photoshop to trick reality, we're actually gonna use Photoshop to get reality back because the wide angle lens just totally did away with reality for you when you put it on your camera. So what we can do is we can take our lasso tool and make a, make a very loose lasso selection of whatever it is in your photo that became smaller because of the wide angle lens. Gen again, generally it's gonna be something off in the distance. Then we come up here to the select menu we go down to modify and we choose feather. I usually hit it with about 50 pixels. You could try hundred. Uh, there's no exact number, somewhere between 50 and hundred should work. What you're gonna look for is the edges and the seams to make sure that there's not a problem. 
So it softened that selection, and then I can press Command or Control J, and now if I hide that bottom layer, you can see what it did. You can see it popped that up onto its own layer, just that selected area, okay? And then what I would do is go to Edit, Free Transform, and now I can make this a little bit bigger. And you can hold your Shift key down to constrain or unconstrain, uh, whatever you need for that photo, but I can extend this a little bit. I don't wanna go crazy and, you know, I don't wanna do something like that, but I can definitely extend this and then just move it around to fit it into place, like so. Hit the little checkbox at the top, and then your choice. If you wanna do it the destructive way, which I have zero problem with, you can grab the eraser tool and erase away any little duplicating areas or seams. Uh, if you wanna do it the non-destructive way, feel free to use a layer mask. If you're familiar on how to use those, you can feel free to erase with a layer mask. I'm not gonna go into layer masking here, but um, whichever way suits you, I would never do this non-destructively because I know I don't ever wanna go back. So uh, I, I, it wouldn't be worth it for me, but again, everybody works a little bit differently there. So if you look at the, uh, the before and then the after, now we can really bring back the scale of things um, that was changed because we used a wide angle lens on the camera. All right, so let's go back to your tips here and see what you guys got going on. Uh, we got one here from Michael. I get confused with sharpening. When I use it, nothing seems to happen. Um, Michael, it's a tough one. So, you know, if, if you, you usually have to zoom in to at least 100% to see your sharpening, um, if you're inside a Lightroom or Camera Raw. And if you're inside of Photoshop, you know, maybe you just need to add more sharpening to it, but you, you should definitely see it. Make sure you zoom in to at least 100% um, to be able to evaluate it though. <laughs> Somebody says Duncan Matt needs a sponsorship. I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm plenty okay with sponsoring myself. As you guys have seen, I, I have no problem asking you to go to the website and check things out. So uh, let's see here. Um, Nina says, Matt, I noticed you have the crop tool on camera raw. How do you get it to show up? My latest version doesn't show the crop tool. So that's, uh, I, I, actually, I believe I know what's going on with you. The crop tool's there. You're just going into camera raw the wrong way. So if you open up a raw photo into Camera Raw, like I did, then, or, or not even a raw, but if you go into Camera Raw first, uh, then you will see the crop tool up in the, I, I gotta share my screen, hold on. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you will see the crop tool in the top right corner if you go in there first, okay? Um, if you, you can see right over there. So. That's the crop tool. However, if you go into Camera Raw from Photoshop, so you've already got a photo open in Photoshop and you go filter, Camera Raw filter, uh, Camera Raw is not gonna duplicate tools for you. It already assumes you cropped the photo because you could have cropped the photo in the interface you were just in. Um, so chances are that's why you're not seeing it inside of there. Uh, let's see, moving on down one. Um, so I uh, got a qu request on editing an old picture in Photoshop. Um, I don't have an old picture ready to edit in Photoshop, so that's a good, maybe I'll do a uh, morning coffee and uh, repairing old photos. Uh, that'd be actually a, a nice one. Uh, Brian said, do you save photos in Lightroom? I, I, everything starts in Lightroom for me, so there is no saving in Lightroom. When you do something in Lightroom, um, everything is automatically always saved, but that's where all my photo, my photography starts in, uh, is inside of Lightroom. Roy says, uh, do you convert to DNG? Roy, I do not. I personally don't care for the DNG format. Um, Adobe, Adobe created the DNG format, in my opinion, for a problem that doesn't exist and for a problem that won't exist, okay? You can do some more research on why DNG was created. Um, I don't like, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, they say it's smaller. I don't get how you make it smaller without reducing quality in the photo. And it's, it's while it's an open format, it's just a format that's that not everybody supports quite as well as just their raw formats. And again, I think it was created for a problem that doesn't exist, nor do I believe that problem will ever exist. 
Um, all right, looks like we, uh, lots of people, lots of, you know what? I, I think maybe, maybe uh, I'll have to get that, that old photo repair morning coffee session going because I got a lot of, a lot of people are jumping in from there, so. Uh, Phillips. <laughs> so uh, my buddy Blake Rudis, if you don't follow Blake, he's at F64 Academy. He's got a great YouTube channel as well. Um, he's a Kansas City Chiefs fan. He lives in Kansas City and we're, we're great friends, but we also do the same stuff online here. Um, so we had a bet going that the other had to show up into the other person's next big webinar wearing the wearing shirts and, and hats from whoever's team won. So, so you will find Blake, a Kansas City Chiefs fan, in some one webinar sometime soon of mine wearing Bucks gear. Looking forward to that one. Um, let's see. So we didn't bet money. So here's a, so somebody said, you know, did you bet money? So we didn't we didn't bet money. What we did is he's got to buy a Bucks T-shirt and a Bucks hat. He's gonna put it on for the webinar, then send it to me. If I lost, I would have had to buy a Kansas City hat. You get the idea. All right, let's see. Uh, we got Robert had said, how do you suggest using the, Robert said, how do you suggest using the technology previews? I enable preserve details 2.0 upscale. Yes. And Robert, if you want to go back in my, uh, my YouTube, um, you're on YouTube. If you go click on my channel and you go back a couple of videos, just a week or two ago, I did a video on enlarging photos and I talk exactly about that preserve details um, thing that you're talking about inside of your comment there. So anybody that if you missed that tutorial, again, it was going to be pretty recent in the last week or two. So uh, feel free to, to go back there. Okay. All right, guys, looks like we are winding down on the questions. I don't want to take too much of your coffee time because you might need another cup of coffee. But uh, if you guys would, uh, would I mentioned it before, if you guys would do me a, uh, a humongous favor, and that is subscribe to my channel here. And if you're already subscribed, if you could share it, that would mean the world to me because uh, I had mentioned before, and we, we have 50 more people since I mentioned this, but um, I was looking at my YouTube analytics the other day and 75% of people that watch my videos aren't actually subscribed to my channel. So I'm hoping to change that in, uh, in 2021 because that's where YouTube is really where I put most of my tutorials. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed your morning coffee and Photoshop tips. Um, I, uh, I, I really like the idea of the old photos one. So I think, uh, I think look for that one maybe next week or next week or two. Uh, Joseph just put in a comment there, said, do you have any presets for snow photography? I don't, um, you know, any landscape preset w would do. I you know, um, I don't think that there's too many special settings or anything that I would do if it were snow. Um, so I would just look at any landscape presets that I have or that you happen to have already. Uh, I think those would do just fine. Okay, folks, take care, everybody. Hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday and, uh, and I'll see you next Tuesday where I will probably be drinking, let's hope, my own coffee. Um, we'll see you next. Oh, I got to hold on another question here. I'll go ahead and answer this one. Um, so let's see here. Uh, we have, I know these are Photoshop tips, but did you try Affinity Photo? So yes, I, I've tried Affinity Photo many, many times. Um, I'm an Adobe user because I feel for $9, $9.99 a month, you get two of the most amazing software editing packages available between Lightroom and Photoshop. You get them both for $9.99 a month. Um, that used to cost us thousands. And now we get it for 10 bucks a month, $120 a year. I think it's the best deal out there. So is Affinity good? It, Affinity is good. And here's what, here's what I would, here's what I would caution you. Cause I don't want to talk bad about any, I don't want to make anybody feel bad if they use different software, you know, at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is what your photo looks like. And you can get there. I can get there in any software out there. We can all do it if we wanted to. It's how hard you're willing to work. So on the surface, if you were to have a little checklist of Affinity and Photoshop, on the surface, you could check both boxes all the way down the list on what they have. But that's on the surface. So once you get into it, that's where you start to miss all of the Photoshop features. So all that content aware stuff I showed you earlier, if we were to look at a checklist and an affinity photo says distract, removing distractions, it's going to put a checkbox next to it. It doesn't have anything close to Adobe's content aware technology. So yes, on the surface, they look the same when you dive into it, they are not. And so I just, I use really the industry standard and what I consider the best software out there. Um, trust me, I'm all for competition. Um, People think I'm tied to Adobe. 
keep in mind, there's a finite audience out there and they've, you know, I've been talking to them for 20 years. I'm all for other software. I would love to be able to grow and expand, but I can't find anything that I can really get behind that I think is as good. I'm not going to go into another software if I don't think it's as good as what I'm using now. Okay. So hopefully that helps. All right. Um, Rob said, will you ever post a webinar on Photoshop on the iPad? We'll see. <laughs> um, we'll see. I, I, I don't want Photoshop on the iPad. The last thing I want to do is, is take this massive interface and scrunch it down to an iPad size. So I personally don't enjoy using Photoshop on the iPad, but uh, we'll see if the demand is there. Um, well, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Johnny says, what's your favorite new tool ability in Photoshop? Sky replacement. Man, that like, they knocked it out of the park with sky replacement. Like it, it, like they, yeah, sky replacement, hands down. I got a video on my YouTube channel. It goes over every setting in it. You can go check it out, but hands down sky replacement. Okay. All right. I will really say goodbye this time. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Tuesday and, uh, and I'll talk to you again soon.